the dangers of discouragement. Number one, wrong thought and wrong decisions. A little wrong thought and wrong word, decision. When a man is discouraged, he begins to make all kind of wrong word, decision. Because the wrong thought will come. Should I follow this way? Should I do this? Should I do that? Before you know, he make a choice. And the choice that he's making is not the right choice. Because he is discouraged. He can make a wrong decision or a wrong choice. So one of the dangers that discouragement will lure us into is for us to make a wrong decision. And which come from the wrong thoughts. Exodus 32, verse 1 to 4. The Bible says, When the people saw that Moses was delaying in the mountain, remember, Moses went to the mountain to intercede on their behalf. But Moses was taking time there. But when they saw that there was a delay, they began to fight Aaron. They said to Aaron, What come to this Moses that he kept us here? And it's on the mountain sings how many days we cannot wait anymore. And they say and they, they pressure Aaron to make a calf of a molded image. And Aaron said to them, Strip out your ornament, your earring, your rings, and he used it as a go to mold the scar for them. And they began to worship it as an idol. And the Lord was angry. And he said to Moses, Go down, my people, which you have been tasting for. They have gone away from my covenant. Praise the Lord. Wrong thought and decision. Each time we are discouraged. That's why you need to be very careful. When you are discouraged, there is every tendency that you will make a wrong decision. Hallelujah. Number two. Dangers of being discouraged. It can lead to doubt and a total failure. Remember what the Bible says? It says a double-minded person should not expect to receive all anything. Doubt. It can lead to doubt. Exodus 32. The same thing. They were doubting. They were doubting Moses. They were doubting Moses. And because of the doubt, that's why they always turn to their sin. Hallelujah. Doubt. In Genesis chapter 16, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, Sarah, he woke up one day. He said to Abraham, The Lord has reframed us to bear a, me to bear a child. Listen carefully. Why should we continue to wait on the promise of God? Why don't you sleep with this Egyptian's maid, Hagar, so that he can be a child for you? You see how? And they did that, and at the end, the law still appeared to Abraham. This is not the covenant and the promises which I have given. Please, can all shares quench the children? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And it, the Lord said to them, This is not a covenant child. Praise the Lord. Check why all Osha are in the kitchen there. Amen. And the Lord said to him, The one which I promise will do what will come. Wrong decisions and it lead to total doubt. When things are delaying, people doubt. A prophecy given to you, but at the end of the day, the thing didn't manifest. The Bible says, even though when the Lord has spoken, He said, You still need to be patient for the appointed time. It shall what? It shall manifest. Appointed time. That appointed time is not your timing, that is the appointed time of who? Of God. You see, that's why those who are making all kinds of wrong steps and wrong decisions, 
check out is that step and that decision you are taking is it something that is of God amen I know why there is noise there because you are there praise the Lord number what number three the dangers of being discouraged fear and anxiety you lead to fear when you see somebody who is discouraged he always be afraid and always shiver all the time amen because he has lost hope he has lost the confidence always no don't entertain discouragement because it's surely going to lead you into fear and anxiety Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. He said, anxiety in man's heart. He do what? He weigh him down. The burden weigh him down. The burden do what? He weigh him down. Anxiety in man's heart do what? Weigh him down. What does that mean? It means that when you have fear and being afraid, your head is in danger. Your head is what? Is in danger. Number four, impatient and easily giving up. A lead to impatience. You cannot wait any longer because you are discouraged. And you will give up so quickly. Let me tell you, my brothers, there is nothing and no blessings of God that just come so quickly. Amen. Amen. Every Amen. blessing that comes from God need patience. You need to wait. You need to wait. Somebody is playing phone. Who is the person? Please. You need to wait patiently. That's what the Bible says. Now I prove it to you in the book of Proverbs chapter 14, 29. He said, whoever that is patient has a great understanding. But one who is quick-tempered, he said, he displays fully. Even while pastor is preaching, some people still have bad attitude. How can you get blessings in the house of God? Number five, a little anger and bitterness. When we are discouraged, it brings anger, it brings bitterness. Job chapter 42, verse 10. The Bible said, The Lord said to Job, Pray for your friends who have caused you bitterness. You remember when Job was afflicted in Job chapter 1, chapter 2, until chapter 40. The Bible said he was afflicted, and there were friends that came. They're supposed to encourage him, but they were the one that yet caused more pain to him. And he was bitter. In chapter 42, the Bible said, The Lord appeared to Job. I am about to bless you. I'm about to restore you. But you need to pray for your word, for your friends. And the Bible said, After Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored him as twice as what he possessed before. The reason is that because there was a bitterness. Bitter heart in the heart of Job. Amen. Now I'm rounding up. How do we overcome discouragement? How will you overcome this discouragement we are talking about? Number one, learn how to encourage yourself even where there is no one to encourage you. Are you with me? Learn how to what? To encourage yourself. Encourage yourself when there is none to encourage you. The Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 6, when David came to Ziklad, and the Bible says that the infaction, that is the Philistine army, they invaded his territory, and they took his wife, they took all his belongings, and all the plunder both his wife and children, and they took them back to Philistine. And when David came back, and the Bible said everything was taken away, and David was so angry 
And even to the extent that people around him wanted to throw him to death, say, where did you go? Why enemy came and plundered everything? And the Bible says, what thing that David, what he did, is to encourage one himself. Don't wait for people to encourage you. Is somebody hearing me? People, there are people who are like that. You are waiting until pastor call you on phone to encourage you. You are waiting until your friends call you on phone to encourage you. And you refuse to encourage yourself. Let me tell you, the encouragement which you give to yourself, it is the activation of faith. And that will bring deliverance. Is someone hearing me? Look at the ministry of Jesus. Everyone that Jesus healed, he said to them, according to thy word, to thy faith. What elevate the faith of a man is encouragement. Uh, when you see a man who encourages himself, uh, he always surrendered with a boldness. Uh, that's why David, uh, he could conquer Goliath uh, because he encouraged himself. Uh, he know that the God that dwelt in him, uh, as the Bible said, uh, that he that is in you is greater than they that are in the world. Learn how to encourage yourself, my brother, my sisters. Learn how to say to yourself, I am blessed. Learn how to say to yourself, I am strong, I am not weak. Learn how to say to yourself, I am restored. Learn how to say to yourself, I am healed. Learn how to say to yourself, I am favored. Hallelujah. Don't cast spell on yourself. Keep on encouraging yourself. Keep on seeing yourself as a special person before God. Don't look down on yourself. Why people are looking down on you? Do not entertain that. Amen. Number two, how to overcome discouragement. Always have the Holy Spirit to help you. John chapter 14, verse 16 and verse 26. He says, Holy Spirit is your helper. is your advocate. He says, he is the one who will teach you all things. In John 16, he says, verse 13 to 15. He says, he will guide you in all truth. He will show you where to go. He will show you and tell you what to do. He will guide you to the places that you need to go. He will bring the word to you. He will bring direction. He will teach you the things that you do not know. You ask the Holy Spirit for help. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will help you. Number three, remember the good thing that the Lord has done before your life. There is no man that is here now that God has not visited your life in the time past. There was a day that God did something in your life. Do you still remember that day? These are the things that bring encouragement. These are the things that we use to do what? To overcome discouragement. Remember his testimony. Remember the day he saved you. The day he gave you breakthrough. The day he delivered you. The day he set you free. The day you supposed to have an accident. And he saved your life. The day that you were sick. And at the point of death. That he rescued you. The day there was no money in your pocket. There was nobody to help you. And suddenly there was a help that came from nowhere. Which you cannot imagine. That is the lost doing. If you can remember that day. That day can bring encouragement to your today. Are you with me? Remember his goodness. Don't always remember bad, bad things and remember negative things. Don't always remember the bad, bad report. Don't always remember the failure of business. Don't always remember the sickness and the struggle, the trouble and circumstances. But still remember the day of his goodness. Now look at what David says in the book of Psalm 77 verse 11. He said, I will continue to remember the deed of the Lord. Yes, I will remember the miracle of long ago. Not bad report on long ago. Number four, study and keep on hearing the word of God. The Bible says faith comes by word. By hearing. By hearing what? Hearing the word of God. Number five. Prayer and praise. 
Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to 34, the Bible said, Paul and Salas, they pray and they sing praises. And the Lord sent forth his angel to rescue them from prison. But my brother, my sister, I want you to understand that praise and prayer bring breakthrough. Are you with me? Especially when you are discouraged. Sing him. Sing to the Lord. When you are discouraged, that's a time you need to praise God. Praise bring down the glory of God. That's a time you need to pray. The Bible says in First Thessalonians five seventeen, it said, "Pray without word, without ceasing." They will be on our feet. Are you blessed? Say, "I am blessed." Say, "I am blessed." Say, "I am blessed." Now I want you to pray this prayer. I know that there are people who are discouraged. And if you are in that situation, you are feeling discouraged. I want you to come out. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to touch your head. And if you are getting to death, and I still want you to pray this prayer with me. Hallelujah. You know the area that you are discouraged. You know the area that you are discouraged. Say, Lord, I am discouraged. Be honest to him. Open your heart to him and let him know that you are discouraged. And this is the area that you are discouraged. And let him know that you need encouragement in that area. Come, sister, come. Stand here. Hallelujah. Open your mouth. Talk to God. Say, Lord, I am discouraged. I am discouraged, Lord. Because of circumstances that surrounded me, I am discouraged. I am discouraged. And Lord, today, I need your encouragement. I need your encouragement. I need your encouragement. Talk to God. I need your encouragement. Father, Lord, these ones, they are, oh God, asking for encouragement. They are honest and they lay their petition before you. Lord, they said they are discouraged. I pray for you today, receive an encounter of encouragement. May the Lord encourage you, even as you enter this week. May every yoke be broken. May you begin to see the glory of God again. May you begin to smile again. May you begin to laugh again. May you begin to spread and blood through again. May you begin to see the goodness of God. May you begin to see the goodness of God again. I release encouragement. May God show you love. May the hand of the Lord visit you in every ramification of your life. I declare visitation in the name of Jesus. I declare visitation again. That the Lord will bring total restoration. The Lord will bring down his glory again. The Lord Lord will show his kindness again. The Lord will show his mercies again. You are blessed and favored. I pray for you. God is bringing restoration again. God is bringing encouragement again. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are restoring Jesus' name. And I speak to the congregation. Wherever you are standing right now, I declare total restoration. Total restoration. Total restoration. May God encourage you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together for Master Jesus. Please package your tithe and your offerings. Your tithe, see the box, tithe is one side, offering is one side. And God will bless.